Yo, hi everyone, Hashim is here and welcome back to the day 2 recap of the tournament. So today I played two games, let's see how it went. So the first game of day 2 I played against uh, Paul May, he's a really strong uh, player. He went d4 and I went d5. I used to play f5 against d4 which is the Dutch, however I played d5 because it's more uh, more solid he went c4 and here i went to martial defense which i transpose it to uh slav or semi slav it depends on the opponent however he played knight c3 here and i went uh, c6 and here he went e3 all uh, preparation so far and uh, here i went bishop g4 if you watched yesterday's video i when i played bishop g4 and my opponent played f3 i was quite excited on Oh, oh sorry, not. I was quite experienced on these type of structures, so I hoped he would play something like this again. But he's not the same opponent, obviously. So he didn't play it. He played bishop e2, and I decided to take, which is slightly inaccuracy. So I decided to take, and he took back with the queen. And uh, here I went to e6. All solid structure so far. Uh, but the thing is, the main difference here between semi slav and this slav is I didn't have a bad white square bishop or light square bishop. However, uh, by the way, thanks for your feedback. Uh, this is not a fee, fee day tournament. Uh, sorry, this is not a fee day rated tournament. It, it is ECF rated tournament, which is the English English Chess Federation. And uh, yeah, uh, here he played knight f3. Great move, actually. And I played bishop d6. And now he shocked me. Here I had around. As you can see, I had around 1 hour 33 minutes and he had 1 hour 38 minutes. And he played a shocking move. He played g4. It's not the best move. I know that. I know that for good. But as well, I have to know what I should respond against it. And when he played g4, I realized I am in the middle of prep. I'm in a preparation. I'm going to play against the computer now. And... Uh, I had to believe my intuition here a lot and luckily I watched a game recently for Grandmaster Ahmed Al Khatib where he mentioned that even if your opponents start an attack early believe in yourself in terms of believe in your defending uh, abilities so here I start calculating I can't take here that's the first thing because when I take he played something like this and when I go h5 he will go here so if I go here and he play rook here and I go back, he will take my rook. He will take my pawn and rook on the seventh rank is deadly. So this is not too ideal for me to do it. However, what I thought is, okay, I take and I play h5, which is quite reasonable. But I saw he got h3, but apparently this is good as well. It's, it's a drawish, but let me tell you something. It's drawish or it's, it's, you can draw this with the computer. You can't draw it alone. This type of positions are so hard for humans to play, unless if you are Magnus Carson, then that's something else. However, I decided not to do, to do all of that. And by the way, here I, here I spent around 17 minutes to find the best move, which is castling. I castled naturally, and uh, I was like, all right, let's see how it goes. If you go on an attack, I will call the bluff. We'll see. He played g5. And here I played a critical moment, uh, a critical uh, move. I calculated if when he played g5, I don't want to retreat back. So what I saw is g5, I go knight here. When he takes, I take here. Oh, yeah, that, that what I saw. g5, and when I go here, I'm, I'm threatening the pawn with two pieces. As well as when, you, when I go here, and when you take, I go here. I'm threatening to take your knight. And when you move your knight, I take the pawn. And now it's I can take it. It's free. So I played this. So I won't only damage my pawn structure for nothing. No, I will damage my pawn structure to win a pawn as well. However, he played c5 uh, uh, after this move, threatening to take my bishop. And I asked him why he played this. He was like, I was hoping for he was hoping for me to play bishop e, uh, bishop e7, uh, which I didn't play because I know in this type of queen's gambit decline or in the Slav, you shouldn't push too early. You have to push, but in, like in the right moment, not now. So I went back bishop c7, oh sorry, he went c5 and I went bishop c7 and uh, here he played h4, okay, he's starting the attack now, 
and as well i kept the tension i didn't take i did nothing and i played b6 i want him to take so i can take up i i want him to take so i think i take back with the a pawn and, and i activate my rook while it's in the same place and you can't ignore it because basically you take i take and this is a weak pawn and i will take back obviously in the end so he took and i took back with the a and here he played knight uh, d2 because obviously he wanted to get rid of my uh, powerful knight as well. Here I was considering something like some shenanigans which is knight g3 and some potential sacks. Okay, knight g3 takes, I go here, check, and then he play this and I couldn't find a continuation for it. Let's see what does the computer say about it. It doesn't hit it that much, it's only plus one for y here, which is quite interesting. However, I decided to take and keep it keep it casual here. Uh, uh, I was thinking, should I take the c3 knight or the d2 knight? I came to the conclusion I take like this, because if I don't take, he's threatening to come here and here, and I can push b5 in the long term as well. So I was, I'm gonna take here, and he takes back, and he took back with the bishop. And here I played knight d7, uh, developing my knight. And uh, here he went f4 best move he have he have to he have to like start an attack but i calculated well here and i i didn't see a continuation for his attack so, and i i saw myself in a good position actually here i went c5 which i rushed it a little bit i have to go b5 because that was my initial idea when i played c5 i saw this and i was like okay cool i'll go back and it should be fine however and my main idea of c5, I want to play c4 as well, and this bishop will be killed for good. No good bishop for like... It will be bad bishop overall. However, he played h5. And here I calculated a really funny line, uh, which I was considering. Okay, now I need to make a serious, uh, a serious defending resort with my pawns. So I was thinking, is it f6, g6, or h6? Which one is the best? During to my poor calculations, I came up with g6, and what I saw is he takes, he takes back, and he played this, and I play queen h2 defending the mate. But why he played this? Same ideas, but he played this, which is the best move. And I had to play queen a2 because when he takes, because he is now threatening, he takes. I can't take back because this is checkmate. So I had to play queen e2. So when he takes back, I take back with the f pawn, and this is defended. It's a Quite important move. So he played queen two. I played I played queen e seven. Uh, by the way, what I should have done instead of g instead of g six uh, is rook knight b eight apparently to retreat my knight here. But all right, fair enough. Good good for your computer. And uh, uh, sorry, he played yeah queen h two. I played uh, b five here. Uh, he played knight b five, threatening to take here. I went back casually and here I start to saw some tactics which is related to takes, takes and I take here and he takes here but in like a perfect universe while his rock is not defending his queen I could do that I will win a pawn but obviously he did see it. He played e3 here he's trying obviously to do some uh, pawn structure and um, I don't know Okay, he's trying to play something like, he, he wanted to activate his bishop somehow, so he started with e4, sorry, with a3. And here I played rook fc8. I was like, at that position, I was like, I need to do nothing at this position. I need to keep my pieces at their squares. Their squares are good. So what is a good waiting move for me, that it doesn't damage my, my structure, as well as it's not a bad move, which is rook fc8. It's actually, uh, on, on the lead chess uh, analysis board, it's the best move. However, rook c8, and he decided to go bishop c3. And here I played rook a4, which is basically another waiting move. And also, it's a teasing, teasing move. I want him to play b3, and I retreat back. And I basically damage his pawn structure a little bit, because this is a weakness now. So I played rook a4, he played b3, as I hoped. And I went back to rook a8, and he decided to take here, and I took back. And now he's he was threatening to take here, but I'm, I was going to take with a rook, 
and okay even though this is this will be open but it's not really threatening anything and i was happy if he took here so i wasn't really too annoyed about it and he will open up the whole c5 for my rook and uh, i'm i'm in a really better position here i played queen g2 sorry here he played queen g2 and here i played c4 what i calculated of c4 is he can't do this anymore by the way there is uh if, if we go a few lines behind I I wanted to play c4 here, sorry, uh, yeah, I wanted to play c4 here to close his position so he can't take, but the thing is, after c4 he plays here, and uh, I can't keep my queen in the in, in this diagonal, and after I move, so, so here, oh sorry, c, uh, c4 here, I go back, and he takes, and now the, the checkmate idea is still on, so I can't really play c4, however, here, I played c4 the reason of that when he plays this i take here with check look at this beautiful tactic he played bishop b4 i take with check and when he takes back i take here and he has to go down and i go check and he goes here and i take and he takes and i'm basically up a full piece at this end game which is obviously super winning for me so that what i calculated but this didn't happen unfortunately what he what he did is um uh, he played queen b2 and now he's kind of threatening this so i played knight f8 you play this i play here because here i was threatening this and your knight doesn't have any squares you have to play a3 and i don't think so a3 is a really good looking move so he played this he found the good sequence which is this and he retreated back and i went bishop d6 uh trading the knight uh trading the bishop because i i saw that okay my bishop done what it needed to be uh, done. He, he did his mission there, uh, basically. And uh, yeah, he didn't rush. He played king d2. And here I took. And he took back with the pawn. And I took like this. And he took like this. And I played, I believe I played queen c6. And here at this position, we agreed to a draw. Overall, I, wa I had in my time four minutes, something like this. And he had like 10. So... A really good game for me, good performance. Uh, let's look at the review quickly. Uh, yeah, I played with 87 accuracy, he played with 88-9 accuracy. And I played like a 22-50, he played like a 2300. That's a really good performance by me. And now let's go to the second game. Yeah. So in the second game, I got paired against uh, Ivan. He is a really strong player as well. Uh, by the way, this is the most uh, hard tournament I played so far. Uh, the amount of preparation in it was too much, and uh, I came to the final round. Oh, I got the white pieces. I wasn't sure what to play, uh, but I decided just to play chess and we'll see how it all goes. So I played knight f3, and he responded with g6, and here he played. Uh, and here I go d4, he played bishop g7, uh, and I played bishop f4, I played the London, which is, I want to play something that I'm too good with, or at least I'm not going to lose in the opening phase. He played d6, which is quite natural, this is the most challenging structure against the London, which is mainly in the London, you don't want to give the e5 squares that easy, because you might want to be in the e5. So d6 instead of d5 in these type of structures are fine. However, I played e3 and he played knight d7, I played bishop c4 and he played knight h6. I remember after the game I analyzed it with him and he told me I really like bishop c4 because uh, usually here we, we play bishop d3 instead of bishop c4. So we quite like it which is quite nice. However, and by the way, uh, in the previous game my opponent he was around 200 points more than more rated than me and in this game around the same as well so yeah uh, he played knight h6 and i took and he took back uh, by the way we are out of theory so far and i castled and he castled and uh here i went c3 uh i'm playing too solid uh because you don't want to play against a higher rated player than you just play solid uh and yeah no need to invent something new, play solid, and that's it. And here he went e5, uh, best move, and I took, he took, 
and I was anticipating for him to play this. But usually when I play online uh, and I face e4 with knight d4, I didn't find it a really bad thing for me. However, I played knight bd2, which is the best move, and he played queen e7. And here I wasn't sure, do I want to place my knight on queen c2 or queen e2? I was like, okay, queen e2, it doesn't do that much. But apparently I had to, it's better for me to play this to prevent e4 in the future. Which I didn't really consider as bad because I wanted to push and I play this. That's that was my initial thoughts. So I decided to queen e2. Queen e and now he had e4, which he missed. After the game, I asked him why he didn't play e4 because there's so many points at this game that he had to play e4, but he didn't. So if he goes here, I go here. And uh, basically, you go like, I don't know, I go like, uh, sorry. If he goes here, he goes here. And after knight e5, apparently he is slightly better. However, I, I went queen e2. And here he played a5, and I played a4. And uh, he, he, now he played knight c5, uh, and I went rook fd1, which is the best move at the engine. Uh, just in these type of positions, slowly develop your pieces, put them in a better square, and that, and you should be fine. So he played bishop g7 after this. Uh, sorry. So uh, yeah, he played bishop g7, retreated his retreating his bishop back because maybe he realized it's not the perfect diagonal for a bishop. And now he start to consider maybe e4 more. And also I asked him, he was like, I want to move my queen and this will be protected in the future. So he wasn't considering e4 at all, which is e4 is the best move uh, instead of bishop back. So we went bishop g7 and uh, I had to play e4 to prevent him to play it. However, I I played this and he, and he played this and I went back and he went to knight d6. And now I played a really good move. Do you remember what a teasing move is? Let me show you. So here, one of the a4, a5 ideas to bring the knight, to bring the rook on a6 and to bring it to the game by doing this. So I want to play a teasing move. How I can play a teasing move that will stop him to do this? Because now he's threatening to, threatening to take my bishop and I don't want to go back and he will be able to do this immediately so I played bishop d5 first I, I want to tease him to play c6 and when he plays this I go back and that's that's my initial plan so what happened is he did this and I took here and, uh, and I went back and now rook a6 is not as powerful as it was so he played bishop e6 here and uh, I went e4 okay closing the structure very much uh and i will trade this bishop later on and if you take i will take back and i got c4 as a, uh, a c5 as a good square for my knight so here he went rook fd8 and i played knight c4 i found the, the best moves on to simplifying the position to an in game which and it's forcing as well because if you didn't take i'm threatening to take uh i'm threatening to take a pawn basically so what happened in the game is he had to take and he took and I took back with the bishop and he took and he played queen f6 and I took the bishop and uh, here I played uh, and here he took back with the queen I took here he took here and I played and uh, here I made a really good calculations which is I play rook d1 he takes I take he play rook b2 queen b2 I play sorry queen a2 I play b3 he play queen b2 and I play c4. So this, 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 queen a2, I threaten to take here and take here, but wow, this is defended. So threaten to take here and as well as I can't play this because there's a checkmate. So I play b3 and also I cut, cut him off. And when you play queen b2, I play uh, c4 and here genuinely I thought I'm good at this in game. So this didn't happen unfortunately, and uh, and sorry, uh, and yeah, and I took, he played uh, bishop f6, preventing me to give a check, Qu quite reasonable move, and here I went h3, giving a breathing uh, square from my king in the long term plan, and here he played queen c4, threatening to take my 
um, my pawn and here I was going to play this but I saw this and I will have to deal with the pin for the rest of my life I didn't really like it so I decided to play this I keep it casually and I should be better not better but I should be fine so uh, here he, he decided to go with b5 and here I found the best move which is b3 and he took I he went back and I decided uh, I was considering honestly King f1 but I saw I don't know why would I weaken my position after take take this will be uh, like I don't know but this is this doesn't look good does it weaken my pawn structure but apparently it's a draw uh, over yeah I decided not to do it and uh, what happened is I took which is was a mistake I miscalculated. I thought this was complete draw, because what I saw is uh, I play c4 and he takes, and I don't trust to take back. Because what I saw is I was calculating this, and and no, I was calculating this, and when you take, I take like this, and he push, and I play here, and he push, and I go back. But the thing is, revise your you revise your in game, lads. This is losing for white. The reason of that is. The square is the same color of promotion as the as the bishops, so I had to play. I don't know something like he had to play this to prevent me to come here, because my if I want a drawing idea, he, for example, he play this, I go here, and I need to place my knight on a2 square so he can't target it with his bishop. There's another funny line that I calculated, which is. Uh, which is here, here, he takes, I take. He play this to, pre to, to prevent me to come here. And what I calculate is I take here and he pushes and I take here and he pushes and I go here. Now he can't go here and this should be a draw. And I will start push, pushing and I'll bring my king and I take this. So this all didn't happen. And after he took, I realized my plan doesn't work as I hoped for. So I decided to to play knight d2, which is another mistake apparently. I thought this was a good move because you can take as I take here, and if you go here, I go back and I win the pawn. But apparently he had a tactic which is you play this and I play here, and now you play bishop here, and when I take you take with check, and when I take you take here and you win the pawn. However, we didn't reach the, to this unfortunately. And when I played knight d2, uh, he offered me a draw, and I took it. I was happy with the draw. So, that's it. That's overall. I got 2 points out of 5, with technically 4 draws and 1 loss. Besides, I took the first round as a buy. Uh, I'm really happy with my performance overall. I played a bit too critical. Uh, this this is probably my first ter tournament that I don't win any game. It's, it was a really high performance tournament, and uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe as well. I will see you back soon. Bye bye.